Welcome to the Psychology World Podcast with me, Conor Whiteley, psychology student and international best-selling psychology author of over 30 psychology books, bringing you the latest psychology news, fascinating psychology topics and more each week. If you want to learn more, then please check out conorwhiteley.net forward slash books. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube video or follow on your favourite podcast app. And here's the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 222 of the Psychology World Podcast with me, Con Wiley. And today's podcast episode is on why psychology isn't a useless degree. A response to the UK government's Argon be a port. And it is Saturday the 29th of July 2023 as I record this. So this is a podcast episode I'm so excited about because for our international audience on Monday the 20th of July, of course don't quote me on that but I will include the news article in the um, references, the UK government have uh, actually decided to act on a 2019 government report that investigated what I'm terming as con artist degrees. So these are are university degrees that are not useful and basically they're not worth the money. And to my utter horror, the UK government has labelled a psychology degree as a degree with a small premium, which means it is sort of worth the benefit, but you're not going to get a great amount out of it. They're basically calling psychology a useless degree. So I was fuming, and I've been wanting to do this podcast episode for about a week, but I just didn't have time last week, so I'm actually going to record it today. These are my thoughts and opinions on it. So what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be going through the report. There's actually not a lot about psychology specifically. And then I'm actually going to um, sort of combat it. Because I do understand where this report's coming from to a tiny extent. But this report does look at it quite simplistically, I think. And there are also massive problems. Because the problem is, if the UK government does grow a spine... And if it actually decides to act on this, then it means there will be legal limits imposed on universities. Which means it means that there will be legal limits on how many psychology students a university can get. And just as a little context, so on my course, there's of course so there was about 250 people that graduated the other week with me. So if there is a legal limit, there might only be 50 psychology students um, a year allowed, allowed, which means there will be massive problems for the psychology workforce because, oh no, who's going to work in the NHS hospitals and deal with people's mental health? Oh, the hover, which is why the legal limits are, are very, very bad. But anyway, that is what today's podcast episode is for, so I'm really excited about it. And as always, I absolutely love to hear your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this particular episode. If you have any thoughts, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, then please contact me. I would love to get a conversation going about this a topic because this does this actually does have massive implications for the UK. So you can always email me, conwiley at conwiley.net. You can always leave a comment at the show notes at conorwiley.com forward slash podcast and you can always tweet me on Twitter at Cypher Wiley or leave a comment on the Facebook post at Conor Wiley Psychology Author. And today's podcast episode has been sponsored by my clinical psychology collection. So this is an absolute brilliant collection of free books. So this includes formulation in psychotherapy absolutely brilliant book that talks about formulation it's really really critical it includes my first edition of my um, clinical psychology book 
which is a really easy guide to help you understand the clinical psychology at the basic level and um, it includes my abnormal psychology book which as well as that the causes and the and the treatments of a wide range of mental health conditions including depression anxiety schizophrenia and so many more all of these are absolutely brilliant books that I love, that they have a great fun to write and that lots of people enjoy them. So if you're looking for a really easy uh, to understand book, book that I can be in, engaged in and in my normal fun, fun conversational tone, then definitely check it out. So that is Clinical Psychology Collection, available from all major ebook retailers and you can order the payback and hardback version from Amazon local books to all local library if you requested and you can get the ebook to ready for me at payhip.com forward slash con wiley so what was the buying books uh, helps us to support the uh, creation of the podcast and the editing my time is a sponsor by my wonderful patrons so as always a massive thank you to my patrons because your support shows that you like the show and you want it to continue so if you wanted to become a, a patron and uh, get access to tons of great rewards, including early access to the blog post, then you can now become a, a patron at patreon.com forward slash the psychology world podcast. So that's enough for the um, inner deduction material. So let's move on to this really, really fun topic. I'm so excited about this. So we're moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we're going to be talking about uh, to the independent panel, the review of post-education and funding for May 2019. So this is something that the UK government did uh, and in uh, formally it's known as the Argonne report. So I'm really uh, excited about this because we do need to talk about it. We do need to respond to this because I think it's flat out wrong and to be honest, it's not as simplistic as they actually make out. The report itself. So in like this section on, of the podcast episode, I actually want to focus on what the report itself said because there are some interesting points. So the first part of the, the report that actually relates to psychology talks about how the UK has one of the most expensive psychology degrees in the world because of like in international context so in england a psychology degree will cost you nine thousand two hundred and fifty pounds a year okay yeah so that is for one single year whereas wales another member of the uk only has nine thousand pounds but in like the us yeah so one year of a psychology degree at a public university has £6,170. But in Australia, a psychology degree, well for one year, will work, will work cost a maximum of £3,500, so quite a bit cheaper. And then Scotland, well, Scotland, which I'm a massive fan of, a psychology degree will frankly cost you nothing because um, Scotland has free education if you're a, a Scottish resident. So, as you can see, England is a stupidly expensive place to go to education. There have been lots of theories about this, and in, including one that my head of school mentioned, is that um, education in England is not valued, which, to be honest, um, yeah, it. Be, I definitely don't think it is. It is, because if you see the policies that come out, if you see the, if you just see the education secretaries, I don't, I just don't think they're serious about education whatsoever. Mainly because none of them actually have any egg, egg like experience in it. But again, that's a topic for like another day though. So as you can see, England's very, very expensive a place to live, and it's that number which I think the report is based on. That appeals like a, um, a three year psychology degree will basically cost you 27 grand so but that's something that we need to bear in mind going forward in this podcast episode so going on to the report itself and when it mentions psychology this is the thing that i actually want to um quote so open quote the graduate premium for men is low or negative 
at the age of 29 for a sizable minority of subjects. In addition to the creative arts, these include English and philosophy, for which the premium is negative, and agriculture, communications, psychology, languages, history, bioscience and physical sciences, which is zero or very small. Women, by contrast, enjoy a graduate premium at age 29, irrespective of the subject they study, but the premium is small for creative arts, agriculture, social care and psychology. Close quote. So, the reason why they actually choose the 29 age bracket is because, is because basically it's a few years after your university, so that gives the report a really good idea about what you're going to get over your lifetime. So the very fact that psychology is basically no better than creative arts or farming is no better than history or languages. I think that is disgusting and very hurtful because um, I was actually talking with a history friend of mine um, a few like, weeks ago and we both agreed doing a history degree will not get you a job. It seriously won't be. There's just not, because history is really hard to get a job in anyway, because there's so few jobs. And plus also, it's not very specialised at the end of the day. And when it comes to languages, I sort of understand that too. And communications. What does a communication degree does? I have no idea. Creative arts? I have no, I just, I just do not know. I mean, like, again, I, None of these are specialised, but social care and psychology is, because psychology is very specialised. Like you cannot get a job in psychology, you cannot become a clinical psychologist, you cannot become a forensic psychologist, you cannot become an academic in psychology without a psychology degree. So why? Why on earth is this so undervalued? I personally I think right off the top of my head I think it's because um, psychology jobs are public sector of course I know this is turning into a borderline political episode but in the UK um, our government does not care about mental health it really doesn't I think the majority of the older population doesn't and of course it's the older people that vote in like the UK government because over 60% of the population in the UK is over 50. So the fact that they don't care about psychology and mental health I think does have an impact. But psychology is also so much more than mental health. It's human behaviour. It's basically why do we do what we do? It's critical to everything. It's critical to our understanding. It's critical to our criminal justice system so we can understand why criminal behaviour happens. It's critical to our children and our youth so we can understand how do we give them the best start in life. Psychology is everything. So the very reason, the very report done by this done by this government, or to be honest, like two governments ago, or how or basically however many, the fact that psychology isn't recognised of being very, a very powerful force for good, I think is disgusting. Because it can be. It can change lives. It can improve them. So I just think it is flat out weird. But it's even more weird when we look at the average salaries. What is the average salary for a psychologist? So now well, I actually want to look into a number of different psychology jobs and look at their um, average salary and bearing in mind that a psychology undergraduate degree in the UK will cost you about £28,000 and then because psychology is so specialised and you need to have good knowledge a master's degree my master's is costing me even though it's just taxpayer money that I will never pay back um, and right, another eight and a half grand. So a psychology degree at undergraduate and master's level will cost you around £36,000. Okay, so let's just bear that in mind, that number. So I typed into Google, 
UK average salary 2023. Okay, so this is what a normal person earns. This is the average for across all the UK. So this is the average on of all the millionaires and all the billionaires in uh, the UK. And it's also the average of all the um, poorer people and what I call the normal people. So the average GDP per capita in uh, the UK is around £29,588 in 2023 so that's what the normal person earns then i typed in uk average salary for business psychologist and the average from glassdoor.co.uk came back at 41,234 pounds per year that's what a fully qualified person gets and because of that price tag i'm sort of guessing they've Got a few years of experience behind them so let's think about it in one year you can make basically five thousand pounds more than your degree ever costed you so that's one year so in the next year yeah if we lived in a society where all your um, university debt has to get paid off in like a single year so that would leave you five thousand pounds for one year but then for the rest of your working life, you're earning 40 grand. That's £11,000 more than um, than the UK average. And I think that would go up within inflation. It's already £11,000 more, which I think is very, very good. It's very reasonable. In the UK, 40 grand a year can actually get you quite far, I think, at least in my experience. So I find it a bit weird that that's only a class as a small premium because, I mean, doctors, like becoming an NHS doctor or a general practitioner, yes, that might earn you um, £60,000 a year, which is larger. But just because you only earn £11,000 more than um, the average Joe, I don't think that's a bad thing or I don't think that undervalues it psychology at all but that's just a business psychologist now if we look at social psychology like cognitive psychology biological psychology as far as i know if you want to do something in those jobs you can only become an academic and then you can research it in your spare time when you're not teaching so again that is forty thousand pounds according to google so I find it flat out weird because I, this was done through a 2019 higher education single pay spine. So where well, that's basically a like resource. So this figure is very, very true. So you can earn 40 grand to do a psychology degree and to become an, an academic. Again, it's not small. Granted, because of how you're treated and all the other working conditions, 40 grand is nowhere near enough. But again, I don't know how that's cl only classed as a small benefit, uh, benefit though, especially if we think about the larger context about the world, which is where you're going to teach people, you're going to teach students, you're going to inspire them, and they're going to move on, and that they're going to do great things like with their life, using the knowledge that you gave them. So the fact that psychology, especially if you become an academic, is class is useless or just a small premium basically it's not going to give you any premium at all i think it's just so weird because i think this is only done from a monetary point of view because you're inspiring the next generation if i didn't have my lecturers then i wouldn't be here i wouldn't be podcasting this podcast would not exist none of my psychology books would None of my psychology degrees and all the people that I hope to help in the future, they would not happen. So I just find it so weird. So weird. And talking about my favourite topic in the entire world, so according to prospectus.co.uk, yeah, the average clinical psychologist earns, on average, so but the average trainee in the NHS at Ad Band 6 
is £32,306. Now, even though that's from prospectus.co.uk, I do want to sort of counter that. So, um, an assistant psychologist, which you can become after your master's, they tend to earn about £26,000 or £27. They're the sort of price ranges like, that I've seen for someone who's basically just finished like, their master's. Masters. So even though that's basically the same as your undergraduate, I can understand where the report's coming from in that sense. But then on the other side, if when you would do your clinical psychology doctorate, and when you're fully qualified, you can be on 50, 60 or even 80,000 pounds a year, which I think is mad. It's like, um, I see some of the job adverts for like 80,000 pounds and I'm like, yes sir please I really want to become qualified because who wouldn't love to be on £80,000 a year so again though if the idea that doing an undergraduate psychology degree isn't good then how are people meant to become master's students and then how are people meant to gain their years of experience so they can do the clinical psychology doctorate and get on to £80,000 it makes no sense to me because you just can't do it. NHS workforce crisis. So for the final section of this podcast episode, I want to talk about what could happen if the UK government places legal limits on psychology degrees. So the UK government has made its position rather clear from the stuff that I've read that it does want to impose legal limits on these sort of degrees again because it's the uk government it's not clear and it doesn't have any concrete ideas about what to do therefore this section will be very hypothetical so at my university uh, there was 250 people that graduated with me okay and i've uh, mentioned before on the podcast that about 40 percent of psychology graduates end up by doing a psychology master's and it's the master's students that I'm interested in because as I've said before psychology is sort of useless unless you have a master's so that leaves 100 university students okay so let's say so let's say 50% of this 100 decide to do clinical psychology and then uh, let's say 10% after their master's go no clinical psychology is not for me and then the remaining um, 40 people go on to become assistant psychologists. Okay then, that is 40 extra people from my university alone that decide to go and work in the NHS so so they can support the fully qualified clinical psychologist, they can improve lives, they can help people, they can make people feel better who will have the oppression, they can support people who are autistic and that they can help people with ADHD maintain their focus, improve their lives so they can achieve like, something. And also, but most importantly, if you like, have a suicidal person, they can save their life. They can support a psychologist so a person that wants to kill themselves can see that is not the way and life is so, so worth living. That is all what a psychologist can do. Okay. So 40 people from just my cohort alone using these fictional numbers. So let's say the UK government says the maximum number of people can be 100. So legally a university is only allowed to have 100 people on a psychology degree. So that's basically knocks off 150 people. Okay, now let's try and do the same calculations. I love how ambitious I'm being in the fact that I can actually remember that. So let's basically just say that um, on the same source of numbers, so 40% of 100 is 40 people. So about 40 people decide to go on to do a master's of some sort in psychology. So let's half that again. Let's say 20 people go and decide to do a clinical psychology degree. And then 10% decide um, that clinical psychology is not for them. 
that only leaves 18 people out of our 40 that have decided to go into the clinical psychology workforce. Now, I've spoken about this on the podcast before. Our mental health services in the UK and around the world are on their knees. We have vacancies like the NHS has never seen before. There are over 300,000 job vacancies on the NHS. Of course, not all of them are in psychology, but our NHS desperately needs people. So can we really place legal limits on degrees that would get people into the NHS workforce? Because if there's 18 people, and if there's a massive reduction over time of people who actually go into the NHS workforce, then the NHS will be on its knees. Mental health services will be broken. No, in fact, I'm willing to say they will be smashed up because they just don't have the staff. They don't have the new people coming in. And I think that's tragic. Think of all the people that are going to suffer, all the people we can't help, all the people that are never going to be able to access the waiting lists because the waiting lists will be I think easily double because we don't have the staff to get through the waiting list and the backlog. I think this is a moral outrage. I think it's disgusting. And if the UK government does um, place legal limits on the number of students that can do a psychology degree, then I will be livid and I will, I don't know, I think it will push me to some sort of action because we need we need more psychology students and then they've all said the other benefits about studying psychology like an understanding it makes you understand people it makes you understand people from different cultures because of cross-cultural research it makes you understand people that are different from you it makes you understand why autistic people act the way they do and it gives people hope like i've said this before i said this in episode 200 my psychology degrees give me so much hope for, for the future because by understanding how human behaviour works, I can understand that people that are smarter than me, or to be honest, if I was given the right support, then I could come up with ideas with other people about how to in, approve climate change like messaging, um, tackle like racism and prejudice. This is what psychology teaches us and we can do this stuff. I think everyone should have have like these sort of opportunities to learn about stuff because it will increase tolerance and that will make the world a better place. So I know this was a bit rambly, but I'm so passionate about it. I think it's disgusting that they want to do this. And, and I really hope this has struck a chord with you because psychology isn't useless and money is not everything. Psychology teaches us so much that if more people did did psychology, then the world would be a much better place. Place then where everyone would uh, be equal. There would be less sexism, misogyny. Yeah, the world needs psychology more than ever. And just thank you for listening. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's podcast episode and that you got something out of it. I know that I did, I think you could tell in my voice because I love this topic, I love the psychology, I love this podcast, I love all of you wonderful listeners that actually give up your time and to listen to me like ramble on like each week, it does mean so much and the very idea that someone wants to take away psychology is just, it's just beyond me and I'm gobsmacked and I can't actually believe that I've been talking about this for like 22 years like minutes now even though when you guys like listen to this it will be edited and like redefined so just thank you for listening i really hope you found this useful and again i would love to hear your thoughts and feelings on this so if you know someone who would love a today's episode then please share it with them i'm always really grateful when you want to be help spread the word about the podcast i really really am And if you want to learn more, then definitely check out Clinical Psychology Collections, available in all the usual places. And if you want to become a patron of the show, 
then definitely check out patreon.com forward slash the psychology world podcast. So have a great day everyone and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope you found it helpful. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the the YouTube channel and follow the podcast on your favourite podcast app. And if you wanted to learn more, then please check out the backlist of the podcast episodes or my books at conwhitely.net. So have a great day and I'll see you next time.